It's the most exciting time of the year, and often we wait with eager anticipation. We think we understand it, but it has many sides. Springtime in Europe. We follow it from the plains to the mountains, from the inlands to the sea, from the warm countries in the south to the cooler climes of the north. The moist air following the fertile winter rain heralds the beginning of a new season. The parched terrains of the summer are past, and now the Mediterranean ushers in the awakening of spring. The spring migrates across the land as if in a frenzy. Even the high mountains cannot contain it. In Spain, the first warm days occur in January with temperatures reaching 20 degrees. The cool nights produce a delicate mist that envelop the lagoons. In the flat waters close to the shore, a group of cranes have spent the winter's dark hours safe and undisturbed. As the sun rises, the group stirs into life. Group after group sets off to the feeding grounds. They commute every day back and forth. It's not far with only a protruding hilltop as obstacle. Their destination is the expansive Holm oak forests that cover large areas of central Spain. It's an open landscape sparsely populated with single trees spread across the gentle hills. This parkland, the Teheza, has evolved from once dense forests and is over 4,000 years old. Gnarled oaks with expansive crowns dominate the view. Under their leafy roofs, the ground is strewn with fruit, an immeasurable wealth, nutrition that has made the journey from the north of Europe all worthwhile. Throughout the winter, the family of cranes live closely together. An adult shows its offspring how to deal with the hard seeds, They're not swallowed whole, but instead taken apart, arduously, bit by bit. The cranes sound agitated. Perhaps they're nervous because of the herd of pigs nearby. Together they share this empty countryside. The black Iberian pigs can be traced back to ancient times. They are connoisseurs and find the acorns irresistible. Their diet of acorns gives their meat a distinctive taste. The ham produced from them is called pata negra. Throughout the winter weeks, they forage the ground under the trees.
Spain is already teeming with life, even early in the spring. A mother observes her offspring attentively. The young rabbits have just left their burrow for the first time and are now taking in the warm sun. For them, the brightness of a new world. In the eyeful charge of the grown-ups, they make their first forays across the fresh foliage. Spain is the homeland of the rabbit. From here, they have spread out throughout the world. The greenlands between the oaks are grazing grounds for the sheep. The herds are all but lost in their expansive surroundings. At the end of January, the new lambs are born. They're somewhat unusual neighbors. However, they don't seem to be of much concern. The lambs in spring have much to keep them occupied. And like all infants, they love to play all day long. Eventually, everything calms down again, which is good because that new coat is a little bit itchy. Nearly 100,000 cranes spend the winter in the milder climate of Spain. It is not only the abundance of food that lures these shy birds to the Dehesa, but also the fact that they are undisturbed. At the end of February comes a disquiet within the flock. One sunny morning, the time has come. With a strong northerly wind, they set off for their breeding grounds in the Arctic Circle. Within 24 hours, the loud trumpeting of the cranes is absent. And with their departure, the countryside reverts temporarily to its tranquility. But then, a new morning has dawned. As the dense fog lifts, griffin vultures take to the skies. Vultures live together in the steep faces of the Sierras, the mountain ranges that cut through the central region of Spain. With the first winding thermals, they set off on their way. Early spring in Spain can be very changeable. The vultures have a problem when warm days are followed by colder and rainier ones. Under their own steam, such large birds have difficulty to fly. But with the help of the thermal winds, their flight is mostly plain sailing. Even from 3,000 meters, they are capable of detecting a sheep separated from its flock or a dead rabbit. The grazing lands of the sheep are very favorable for the vultures. 
The large flocks spread out, at ease nearly alone in the countryside. Such nonchalance does not go unpunished. Should one of the vultures descend, then the others will follow. A sheep is not so much. In less than half an hour, only the skin and bones remain. After a little starter, it's back to the skies in search of further prey. If food is in short supply, the flock's course can extend as far to the south of the Iberian Peninsula. Portugal's coastline at the most southwesterly tip of Europe has been shaped by the Atlantic. On the one hand, into expansive beaches, and on the other, rock faces that have offered sturdier resistance. The spring can throw up some very stormy weather. At first glance, the stormy results of the weather seem repellent, but the rugged cliffs are popular. One of those, the kestrels, are only here for a break. Others want to start a family. White storks have built their nest directly above the surf. In their approach, they often have to prepare for some tricky winds. It is one of the most unusual breeding grounds. Storks don't often breed on coastlines. The young storks don't feed on fish, but instead, like all the others, on insects, mice and frogs, which are only found much further inland. However, the extra effort seems to pay off. No one seems to want to challenge their windy seats on the spears. Although the young are already chattering in many nests where the storks have a little more experience, the less experienced have to prepare themselves for a longer wait. They're only newly acquainted, and so a little pampering can do no harm. Plant life is especially sumptuous in the salty sea air. A landscape of bright colours with the marsh daisy and ice plant. Broom cover the sprawling dunes as far as the eye can see. Here we find one of the strangest animals in Europe that one more readily knows from the tropics. One only finds chameleons at the southern edge of our continent, surly loners who only become social during the mating season. They spend the winter underneath rocks or in crevices. It is only as the temperatures rise that they roam tirelessly. Their source of nutrition is barely discernible to the human eye and they rely on their sturdy grip as they climb. A laborious undertaking.
Their tails are also integral to their climbing abilities, allowing them to suspend themselves like a master among the broom. Chameleons are most impressively camouflaged within the tangle of branches and from a short distance, invisible to the eye. In the most southern part of Portugal, in the Algarve, the climate is almost subtropical. With the winters mild and the summers not too hot, it is like a permanent springtime. Where sand and silt define the view, life has its own unique rhythm. It runs in the cycles of high tide and low tide. When the water recedes, some very unusual creatures appear. Fiddler crabs like the chameleons are more at home in Africa. It's no surprise they like the warm temperatures. It is only the males that possess such a large pincer. The females have two small pincers with which they forage in the sand. The oversized pincer of the male can be nearly half of their body weight. It's a mighty weapon best deployed in the intense rivalry battles. Building a den is hard work for the fiddler crabs, and so it's not unknown for them to simply take over the hard work of another. If a polite knock on the door is not enough, then the large pincer comes into play. But even attempts at forced entry are no guarantee of success. A crab will not give up its laird easily. Fiddler crabs are stubborn and have a hard armour. Although the large pincers may be intimidating to their rivals, they actually serve another quite unique purpose. And that is as a lure for the females. They can wave sometimes for hours unremittingly. Advertising oneself can be very arduous work. If a tentative wave is not enough, then perhaps a little dance routine. Not every female is so easily impressed. There's nothing left except to wait for some hours until the next tide provides Perhaps another possibility. Africa is close at hand where the Atlantic merges with the Mediterranean. Directly opposite on the European side, is Gibraltar. This steep rock is lashed by the surf at its base, but further up is a small breezy paradise.
Barbary apes, normally more at home in North Africa, have settled here. The permanent spring in the south of Spain is very much to their taste. With its fresh green vegetation, it's a table laid. The odd dispute will always occur, but the apes actually live very peacefully in smaller groups. All of the members take care of the younger ones. It's something that helps hold the community together. The mothers are quite at ease to leave their offspring with others after only a few weeks. And delousing a neighbour's fur is not only an activity of bonding, it tastes good too. Nobody knows exactly how long the Barbary apes have had their outpost here, but they feel quite at home here and are also tenderly cared for by the people of Gibraltar. In the inlands of Spain in the Dehesa, the winter green has given way to a colourful carpet of flowers. All of the almond trees are now in full bloom and swarms of bees are busy collecting pollen and nectar. The tips of the mountain ranges still have their white peaks, but their bases are decorated with countless millions of flowers. Such a dazzling array of flowers only comes sometime every few years when enough rain has fallen. Their abundance of life is due to the conservational farming of the Dehesa with few grazing animals and no manure or toxins used. White storks have established their nests in the tops of the trees. Now, the spring is at its pinnacle. The air seems to positively vibrate with the sheer volume of the calls. Alongside it all is the hoopoe. The ground is covered with insect larvae. Easy pickings for the hoopoe, whose offspring wait patiently to be served in the hole of a knotted tree. Even when the service is not quite as it should be. At the foot of the mountain ranges, in gentle valleys, one can hear the gurgling of small streams covered in early spring by buttercups. Nearby, a colourful community has established itself. Bee eaters. This pair has newly met and have already furnished their nest in the steep wall. Bee eaters love the warm temperatures and return from Africa late in April when temperatures can already reach 30 degrees.
There's certainly enough space to build nests, but finding a comfortable place to sit is another question altogether. This can often lead to a heated exchange. A few days after their return, all has been clarified. Now the seating arrangements have been successfully defended, the couple can concentrate on each other. He tries to further impress her with a little present. B eaters only make a short appearance in Europe. After only four months, they've closed house and make their way back to Africa. Spain was once covered by large forests. Now, after being constantly cleared, the Dehesa is an exception to an otherwise open landscape, scattered only with single trees, bushes and an expansive sea of flowers. Rock roses in spring exude an intoxicating scent. Many others produce nectar, which attracts a colourful array of insects. Scarce swallowtails take their first visit to the flowers in the early hours of the morning. A European mantis is awoken from the cool of the night. They love the heat and are only active when the sun is high in the sky. She would love to go in search of something to eat, but in the spring it's all a bit cumbersome when she has so many admirers hanging around her neck. All are waiting for their chance, with nothing other than mating in mind. And so, she will just have to put up with it for a while. Further down, an oscillated lizard has found itself a sunny spot on a rock. No sooner has it warmed itself up a little, it casts a look around to find something interesting. As the temperatures rise, the nectar flows ever more abundantly, attracting ever more insects. However, a little higher up the flowers, other hunters are present. A brown-coloured mantis sits in wait. Not a single movement escapes its attentive eyes. It is lightning quick and its ragged claws rarely allow an escape. In the face of a defensive bee, however, there are exceptions. Its only comfort is to wait until something more suitable comes along. The mantis has the ability to remain motionless for hours in wait of food. Spanish lavender and wispy grass light up the bushlands and the mountain slopes. Spring as it can only be in the Mediterranean.
the birds follow such a wealth of insects. The bird song of subalpine warblers and thecla larks can be heard all around. High above on the rocky ridges, there lives the most secretive of birds. The blue rock thrush. His delicate call can already be heard in February. Next to the bushlands where humankind cleared the last of the forests arose one of the most bizarre habitats in Spain. Here there is no tree or bush to obstruct one's view. As if made for the animals of the steppe. For a few weeks in early spring, the grassy plains stage a most exceptional spectacle. Great bustards have settled on the vast expanse. Among the males, there are some intense battles of rivalry. Standing toe to toe, they push each other back and forth. Wisely, some have distanced themselves from the competition. With a puffed up throat pouch and the underside of their wings turned outward, these are some truly impressive machos. Far smaller and less conspicuous, the females appear. The foliage of the steppes is rich with herbs in the spring. Tentatively, they select the tastiest ones. It seems that they haven't the slightest interest in the males, but then a short glance gives the game all away. Should a female get too close to a male, he is immediately emboldened to put on an impressive show for her. He will now give his utmost for his chosen one. Success rarely comes with the first attempt, but this is not such a tragedy when one has an entire harem in tow. As the spring gradually draws to a close on the interior of Spain, the coastline sees the congregation of the last winter guests. Behind the beaches in the lagoons, flamingos and northern shovelers. The cranes have long gone and eventually the last guests set off on their way northwards. Flamingos can fly fast and over long distances but sometimes, even in late spring, it's not such an easy journey as the storms gather over the Mediterranean. Falling winds lash the surface of the water. Waves can reach meters in size.
But eventually, the birds reach the Camargue, their largest breeding ground in the south of France, unscathed. Swarms of them land in the lagoons, some years as many as 40,000. Soon, they are again the companions to the wild horses that are so typical for the delta of the Rhone. The grey horses live in smaller groups of around 40 animals. The horses of the Camargue are renowned for being very temperamental. It's only fitting that they spend nearly the entire year wild and free. Having run at a scorching pace, it's now time for a little respite at the lagoon. The Camargue is a landscape with its own quite individual beauty at times charming with its banks of reeds and dotted with small pools, and then turbulent with expansive open waters. The far-reaching marshlands are neither sea nor land, but instead fringe the lagoons offering pastures on a fluctuating foundation. In spring, the mares stand on their grazing lands with their foals. Camargue horses are austere, sure-footed and very agile and are used for herding cattle. Their offspring are born hidden by the protection of the reeds. The foals can't get enough of their mother's milk. It's certainly tastier than the tough reeds. All foals come to the world with a darker colour. It's only later that they develop the characteristic white colouring. Following their arrival, the flamingos congregate close to their breeding grounds. The waters have been warmed by the spring sunshine and is now full of their favourite food, small shrimps, which contribute to their bright pink colouring. Flamingos are very sociable birds. However, a next length distance has to be maintained. Soon they are in the mood for mating and the build up is mutual. The vigorous turning of their heads from side to side is the prelude to a very impressive ceremony, which soon spreads throughout the entire gathering. Further signals are sent with the spreading of the wings, which helps them to decide on their perfect mate within the group. Flamingos brood more successfully when they can raise their offspring all at the same time.
When the recruiting has been successful, they set off to the breeding ground some minutes flight away. further inland, away from the coast, lays a bizarre cast landscape. The water forms in deep canyons. The rocks are porous, and in many places the water seeps into the cracks and the crevices, taking mysterious courses before broadening out again far away. Born again, the creek carries a new green coat. Concealed between the branches, a nightingale. The water is now crystal clear after being filtered through sand and stone. Aquatic plants shimmer an emerald green. Again and again, steep drops produce waterfalls. Thereafter, the rivers stretch far and wide across picturesque plains where wine and olives are cultivated. The smell is of wild thyme and rosemary. In the mild temperatures of the Provence, the Mediterranean spring presents one of its most beautiful sights. Broom and poppies in May border the paths and the fields. In some parts, the land is a sea of bright colours. In the moister areas, poet daffodils cover the arable lands. On the horizon, the Alps are indicative of a much harsher world. Like a meteorological divide, they separate Central Europe from the South. Snow and ice never relinquish the peaks from their grip. There, one can wait longest for the spring. However, with the warmer air currents from the Mediterranean, a new season begins too in the Alps. The rivers have been freed from the ice. Overnight, it seems that a new landscape has been born with the thaw. In the sunnier areas, the melting snow releases the first splash of colour across the alpine meadows, with primroses, pasque flowers, violets and gentianas. Plants have no time to lose. 
a sea of crocuses appears no sooner than the snow has cleared. The sun has also enticed the marmots from their dens. They've spent the last six months in darkness. Now they can enjoy the light and the warmth. After being enclosed in tight spaces for so many days, they can finally move freely to play and test their strength. Sometimes with a zest for life, sometimes mischievously. The spring in the high mountain ranges also has its whimsical sides. Like when from one minute to the next, the clouds and the mist bring about some colder days again. Then a cold wind sweeps across the glaciers. Guided by shepherds, sheep are underway on their travels. Every year, they are bought from South Tyrol and herded over the steep climbs of boulders and glaciers, the same as they've done for the last 500 years. Their way is arduous and not without danger. They have to overcome an altitude of nearly 3,000 meters. Even mothers with their new lambs are here, lured on by the lush summer meadows waiting on the north side of the Alps. After hours of hardship, they're nearly there. A short rest, and then it's just a little further. Underneath the mist, a welcoming world of fresh herbs awaits them. Weeks of freedom and relaxation in a mountain springtime which has just begun. The spring has driven off the winter. From the Mediterranean to the high mountains. And north of the Alps, its triumphal march continues.